Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Rest From Off The Cuff. Today we have another Christopher Ward for you. Uh, definitely a channel favorite as far as the brand goes. A little bit about them, if you haven't heard of them before, Christopher Ward. They were founded in London. They're out of the United Kingdom, of course. And they're basically a micro brand that honestly at this point, it's hard to even qualify them as a micro brand. Um, and it's because of the depth of their lines, uh, you know, the amount, the volume, really um for me i feel like they've kind of ascended past the level of a micro brand and they really for me feel like they're more in the kind of boutique range uh, and essentially you know the difference there being that um one the just the fact that they have that depth in their line and two i mean they're really producing to the level of what the demand is, um, if not higher, even in some cases. So I feel like micro brands, you know, they're definitely, it's more of a case where, you know, it's their passion projects, they're putting them out there and it's a, you know, they have a small lineup. Now with Christopher Ward, they, they have like, oh, all of the their bases covered. They have dress watches. They have motorsports. They have divers. Um, they have GMTs. You know, they have quartz. They have automatics. They have manuals. They have in-house. So they're just on kind of another level. So that's something I just you know would want to throw out there. And of course, they have you know uh, one of the better known uh, warranties that are out there that are, are just pretty insane as far as uh, a boutique brand would go because I don't even I, I'm trying to really resist calling them a micro brand because I to call them just that I feel like is a little bit of a disservice to everything that they've accomplished which has been a lot um, so this particular watch here uh, it's been out for a little while but I've been wanting to get it on the uh, channel for review because I, I think it's just an outstanding piece and it's really surprisingly overlooked. And especially now that they released it with this uh, full bracelet, I, I think it's really just a great buy and um, it's it's kind of a even a low key <laughs> um, Zen five five six competitor. I think um, so. We'll get a little bit uh, about that into the review, but you know, for this type of watch, which I would categorize as an everyday watch, you're gonna want something that's pretty much a versatile blend of sporty and dressy attributes, which I think this really does. So uh, although it'll be reviewed here on the stainless steel bracelet, I could easily see this piece on a uh, leather strap and uh, either dressed up or dressed down on NATOs. I mean, this thing is clearly a strap monster and uh, rightfully so because I think it just has that uh, really great uh, design aesthetic. So actually before we get it in hand, let's just address the elephant in the room. It does have the updated logo, right? Um, I don't mind it. I think um, there's definitely worse places you can put text on a watch. I, I, there's so many chronographs that are out there that have text on on uh, on the side of the dial. I don't know why it's been so offensive to other people. I almost think of this rebranding as as more so debadging um, the 12 o'clock branding that's there. That's, you know that used to be there, the logo. Um, versus moving it. I think everybody feels like, oh, you, you moved the, they moved the logo. Oh man, they ruined the watch. I, I don't see it that way. Um, I see it more so as really that kind of big open space um, at the 12 o'clock to me is, is their new logo uh, in, in a way because it just has that, it, it catches your eye and it's kind of what you look for when you look for one of these watches now is, um, you know, you're looking for more of the bottom half of the dial to have the information in the top dial part of the dial to be a little bit more open space and um, when people freak out and they're like oh it's just you know the balance and this and that it's like all right well there's hands that are floating around <laughs> the dial the entire time because it does tell time um, and there's plenty of people that are putting out watches that are completely debadged and um, you know nobody says anything about those um, about big empty faceless dial that's lopsided or this or that um, because you know there's options with a date um, but with no logo on it you know uh, for certain watches that are out there so I don't know I just think it's been really blown out of proportion and I feel like it's kind of a bandwagon-y thing to just write off a brand that everybody 
you know, for the most part, loves. It's funny you'll see like most of the most hateful comments on people on uh, from you know from people about Christopher Ward's things. They all start with I would keep buying their watches if it were. I would definitely buy this watch if it wasn't for the writing. So I, it's just I don't know. It, it seems like a little crazy to me, uh, especially when they have watches that are, are of this quality at this price point. So let's go ahead and, and kind of get off that tangent and take a closer look and get this bad boy in hand. All right. Now, in hand, as you can see, it, it, of, of course the dial uh, aesthetic there is, is very simple. Um, but one of the things that I think a lot of people fail to notice is the case finishings on here. I mean, look at those beveled edges, just gorgeous. Even has a bevel on the underside. Then you have this beautiful box dome sapphire. I mean, this checks a lot of boxes for me um, as far as, you know, the execution, the design. Um, the water resistance, this is 150 meters water resistant. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, as, as we move on. But, you know, although you did get the, the dims right there uh, on the side of the screen in the beginning of the video, let's go ahead and touch on some of the main points again. So this is 38 millimeters in diameter, which I think is a nice little sweet spot. Um, I wouldn't go any smaller uh, for a kind of a more sporty everyday look. Um, but I think in between 38 and 40 is really great, especially when you have um, a dial like this and, and, and of course a bezel like this. Uh, you, could, you definitely can get away with a larger size when you have a dive bezel. But when you don't have a diver's bezel uh, and the proportions are going to be mostly dial, I think you start creeping into a little bit oversized category once you go above 40 millimeters uh, just for this type of layout. So the height is 11.6 millimeters, which, you know, of, of course that's going to be taking into account that beautiful domed uh, sapphire box dome there, vintage style. But this by no means wears like a thick watch. As you can, I think you can see here, you know, very nice thin mid case. And then with the chamfer on top and then the chamfer underneath, it makes it play even thinner visually. Same goes for this side there. And then you have the bezel sits a bit proud. Um, and then you have, of course, this beautiful box dome that sits uh, proudly above that. So really nicely done. And you know, there's, there's really not much else to say on that. Uh, the lug to lug is 45.3 uh, millimeters. So very, you know, manageable as far as that goes uh, and the sizing. Of course, I think if you're looking for a 38, you're, you're probably not too worried about the lugs um, because it, I don't think there's too many 38 millimeters that have huge long lugs on them. But if you are small wristed, this is going to still fit you really well. And um, I, I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist. I think it fits me really great too. So if you have a larger wrist, you know, it's, it's going to fit you well, I, I think too, because it is kind of in that sweet spot. Now that crystal is actually four millimeters thick. It does have inner AR coating, which is very nice. As you can see, you know, not much distortion there. Everything still quite legible, quite readable. Just not much to complain about, you know, maybe besides uh, not having <laughs> a logo at 12. <laughs> Other than that, I'd say there's not much to complain about, but you know, uh, we'll, we'll decide when we start seeing all the comments roll in. <laughs> but the, uh, the crown is screwed down and signed, and I think it's really nicely executed. It, it, um, as you can see, it's just pretty well detailed. Uh, this is the more updated version of the crown that has their new logo that's the Swiss flag and London's flag kind of transversed with each other there. 
and um, it's really nice. It has a nice feel to it. No sharp edges. It has a nice chamfer on on the end there. Just really well executed, and and you know nothing that I wouldn't expect from this piece after handling it. Now the movement inside is going to be a Salita SW200, which is you know essentially a ETA2824 clone, but well respected in the community. Of course, you know, it's, it's, uh, nobody really, actually, there's probably certain sides of the fence. Some people consider it an upgrade from, uh, you know, a 2824. Some people consider it a downgrade. I think to me, it really all depends on, you know, uh, the level basically of finish and whatnot, because there's always going to be different grades. Um, I think, uh, you know, grade for grade. You're going to go with a base model versus a base model. There's really going to be no difference. You're only going to really see those differences as you go up in, uh, in grade. Now, um, if you haven't noticed, this does have a beautifully all brushed um, bracelet there. Nicely tapering. And then you have this great uh, clasp here, which is really nice. It actually does have quick micro adjust there so you don't have to have a tool to really dial it in and then the actual corners here and edges on the clasp as you can see have a really nice chamfer to them um, so they're gonna feel nice and smooth it's just that extra step um, you know I think that Christopher Ward takes that I can really appreciate so that's gonna just wear really nicely along the underside of your wrist now, as far as the dial goes, um, it of, of course is a um, nice matte black dial, very versatile. Um, you have applied indices, you have the date complication at three o'clock. It does have that old radium super luminova, which actually glows really well. And although it doesn't say it on the dial, as I mentioned previously, this watch has uh, 15 atmospheres, water resistance, or uh, 50 meters, 150 meters. So that's just outstanding. I think that is um, just about perfectly as robust as you want to get on an everyday watch. Anything else, you know, you're get basically you're going to be getting more um, water resistance at the cost probably of some thickness there. So. I think that's just really well done and um, great choice. And then, you know, 150 meters is definitely something you'll find on some more high end options like an Aquaterra or uh, an Explorer or something like that range um, has been kind of that sweet spot of a uh, very capable sports watch that you can swim in. Um, and you know, honestly, you could dive in this if you really wanted to, but it's not a big watch. Uh, um, so legibility isn't probably going to be the same as just having a big old, um, dive computer on your wrist at this point. So, uh, but if you wanted to, for the novelty of it, you could easily throw this, of course, on a nano or a rubber strap, or even have it on the steel and take it down with you. And it would be more than capable. So. Uh, if I didn't mention before, really nicely done case back, beautifully stamped there, one of the better in the business. And then, of course, you're going to see there's also quite a slew of different finishes there. Um, so there's a little bit of some radial brushing, some bead blasting, some high polish. Um, so really nicely done. And then, of course, the bracelet. Does, this does have 20 millimeter lugs, which is just about perfect, tapering down to 18 millimeters. And one of the nice things is, the um, because the clasp is so thin, um, the clasp itself isn't much thicker than 18 millimeters. Normally you'll have like an 18 millimeter uh, taper down to a 20 millimeter clasp. Um, but this isn't gonna be, you know, full 20 millimeters thick, I don't think. I think it's probably closer to 19. So I, I do like that. Of course, it would be nice to have something milled, but at the same time, if you're going to get something out of it being, you know, a folded piece of metal, uh, the thinness and, and they, they didn't skimp out, um, you know, I'd, I'd much rather they have this nice and thin and tapering, um, you know, going along with the taper here, I should say. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, spend a little bit more money here on this folding mechanism, which is just going to make it more robust uh, to wear daily, take on and off and whatnot. And then, of course, it does have great 
locking mechanisms there. Uh, they didn't skimp out whatsoever. For me, this is more of a design choice than a cost cutting choice. So let's go ahead and get this on the wrist. Okay, as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, I think it wears really great. Even if you kind of get more of my arm in there and, and you look at the watch, it doesn't look too small. Um, and you get it up close and it doesn't look huge uh, because it's only a 38 and I think it wears really well. And um, as I mentioned earlier, kind of uh, another option, let me pull this guy in here, um, would be something like a Zen 556. Now, the Zen 556 is a hugely popular watch, um, you know, and, and, and by all means it should be. It, it's a glorious timepiece. Um, it's not the best at any one thing, but everything that it does, it just does really excellent. So across the board, it doesn't really, I wouldn't say it has any shortcomings. Um, so it's just a really great piece. And when you compare it here, you can see that they have a very similar footprint. Um, and, and even just the, the design aesthetic, of course, um, there is, this is the 556A, um, but there's a 556i that doesn't have the Arabic numerals and just has the indices, which would be a closer match here, except these indices are applied versus indices being printed. Now, another big difference you're going to see here is in the price. I mean, you know, $1,400 watch versus, uh, you know, a watch that's under 800 bucks, $755 watch. So, I mean bang per buck that's a pretty great deal and um and then you start looking at some of the case finishes there i mean look at that bevel you're not really going to get that you know those types of details on this zen or really any zen um and, and part i mean i'd say most of that has to do with their design aesthetic they're definitely going for something that's meant to be more spartan and um you know not as ornate and, and whatnot but you know, I'm, I'm a real sucker for some finely finished um, bevel work. So, and then I got the box dome here. It's just the flat. So, I mean, I even prefer the crown. I mean, I do feel like the, you know, I guess you could, a subjective shortcoming here is that the crown is, you know, that S doesn't really even suit the Zen logo S. Of course, the our hands covering it. But, um... You know, I, I just don't, I think it could definitely be better uh, from that standpoint. That's probably the only thing that I'm kind of just like, eh, I, I don't hate it, but it's I definitely to me, I, I just don't think it's as good as the rest of the watch. Here, I mean, I think this is a fantastic crown. And um, I mean, I love this watch. Uh, I would never sell this piece. Um, I think the 556 is just really a timeless watch. Um, but, you know, if somebody was asking me for recommendations and they said, you know, I really like the Zen, but I just am not going to spend that much money on a watch with those specs, you know, because specs wise, this doesn't have too much to it. It's it's uh, it does have 200 meters water resistance um, with a top grade movement in it and a display case back. I mean, that's killer. That's going to be tough to find. Um, that just goes to show the engineering that. The, that goes into a Zen watch is that, you know, hey, it's that robust that it can have a display case back and um, and still be 200 meters water resistance. But I mean, uh, at the end of the day, 150 meters water, there's nothing you can do. You know, it's not like you're going to take this 200 meters anyway. Right. So 150 meters is just as good, um, you know, realistically day to day. So. I just think that this is just a really cool option and it's just really surprised me how overlooked this watch is. I mean, especially when you have watches like uh, the Aquaterra Railmaster that are out now, very similar aesthetic, you know, similar specs and whatnot. Uh, you know, this does fit in that same niche. Um, and I think it, it does it really well. And as you can see, even on my seven and a quarter wrist, it lays nice. It, it has a nice wrap to it. The uh, the end links are nice and sharp there. You see the uh, basically the little T end link. You know, a lot of times you'll see those being more rounded off. This is still nice and sharp. Not super pronounced or anything, but 
look at that it just lines up you see how the light catches those two bevels pretty much on the ends there it, it just perfectly flows with the bracelet center link right so it's just a really well designed piece well executed and um, I think it deserves more praise especially when you figure how many people just drool over the Zen 556 line and it's a beautiful watch and it's definitely drool worthy um, I drooled over it for a long time before pulling the trigger but one of the reasons I hesitated to pull the trigger so long is because for me the you know the the value per dollar um, was always the thing that that kind of held me back um, aesthetics wise you know build quality wise I, I never had any questions about it and I knew that it was definitely gonna be worth the price tag but you know I just felt like bang per buck wise it just there's a lot of other options that were out there maybe not with the same aesthetic but that offered a lot of the same features um, you know for not much um, you know in, in comparison to this piece which is only getting more expensive so yeah I mean I, I just always thought this thing was gorgeous um, it just checks the right boxes as well so I mean to me I, I think it actually is a pretty nice alternative if you've always liked Zen but maybe you know you wanted something like that to fill your space in your collection um, and you're not looking for anything Japanese or German and you're looking for something a little bit cheaper I mean hey under 800 bucks and then you start factoring in all the crazy deals and sales that uh, Christopher Ward gets I think that's you know speaks for itself so let's go ahead and get a little bit of loom here for you okay let's go ahead and hit the lights as you can see the loom is really quite nice um, especially the hands they, they burn pretty darn bright and you know again this isn't a dive watch but it's uh, by no means a slouch when it comes to you know it, it's loom chops there um, I'm sure even with a brighter charge it could probably have a little bit more brightness there but it definitely is uh, more than sufficient in the loom department uh, I don't I'm not sure if it's gonna show up on my camera the same way or not you just never know but I gotta say in person I've never had any um, complaints on that so let's go ahead and get some low light transition there just to get a look at what this piece looks like and I think uh, another thing that's a little bit misrepresented about this watch is uh, the patina de loom uh, it's definitely not as yellow as you see it in, in a lot of the pictures it's you know of course it's not pure white or anything but I to me it just doesn't uh, I don't know in pictures it always just seems a little bit more yellow but I think it's definitely more of an ivory tone in person and, and very easy actually to get washed out um, when you're looking at it in bright light. So if you're not really into patina bloom, uh, I think this actually hits a pretty nice sweet spot uh, in that respect as well. So I think this is just a really underrated piece. Uh, I think if it was released um, with uh, the old logo, it would probably have been met with much more fanfare. Now, again, uh, yeah, you know, the elephant in the room, can you live with the new logo? Um, I'm fine with it. Um, I think it is, I do like dials that have something up there, you know, of course, the Zen I just showed. The only words it pretty much have are Zen and up at the top. Um, can I do without the words up there? Yeah, I could do without the words up there on the Zen as well. Um, but it's one of those things, I think, uh, you, it just seems silly to me to miss out on a watch, especially when I see some of these comments, you know, where, oh man, I love everything about this watch except for the logo and, and I'll never buy it now. It's just like, what? A watch you love everything about except for one thing. I mean, I can think of tons of watches that people love, um, and then there's a couple more than one thing that they just don't like about it, you know, where they don't like the clasp, they don't like, you know, the 
21 millimeter lug width, right? How many watches? That's something that nobody looks for, right? But you end up with it a couple of times, but you know, people don't seem to mind, they can get over it. Um, so there's just, to me, those little quirks and those little things, um, I, I don't think hurt the watch. Um, I think it definitely, for some, um, have kind of built, uh, you know, a mole, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a mountain out of a molehill on this one. Uh, it, would I be happy if they added something to the 12 o'clock? Uh, yeah, sure. It would be cool if they just used the uh, the flag logo and put it up there. Again, I don't consider it their brand. I mean, they, they, that is their logo. Their, the, the name is just the text and the name of the company is Christopher Ward. To me, that's not their logo. Their logo is the two flags, um, and they don't put it up there. And there's a lot of companies that don't necessarily put their logo uh, up in that space. Sometimes they put something else. You know, Rolex puts the crown and their uh, their name up there. So, you know, everybody has a different way of doing it. And I think it's nice to see um, a small company that's trying to do something different. Because um, there's a lot of companies that are out there. It's funny. Um, you know, Steinhardt, for example, right? It's, it's the opposite. Everybody loves Steinhardt. Oh, the, the fit and finish. I just wish they would do something original, right? And then it's funny because Christopher Ward watches have been compared to Steinhardt watches for the longest time. And it's, it's, it's always been kind of their thing that people like of it. Oh, the, the cool thing about Christopher Ward is similar in build quality and whatnot. Um, and, and price wise, you're going to actually get a little bit nicer watch for a little bit more money. Um, but I, I think, you know, um, on a scale wise, it, it, it's still right there in the same type of value proposition. Um, and then people used to say, oh yeah, but they're doing something different. It's more original. And then they do something original again, and people are super turned off by it, which I just, I, I don't get uh, why the backlash. So, I mean, yes, I understand people want that fate, that space filled, but I mean, I have watches, uh, debadged um you know my stoa flieger i opted for the one that didn't say stoa um right there at the 12 o'clock so i don't mind it again i to me i feel like that is their logo is that they're stripped down and they're clean it's it's like when you uh some people will have a car right and it has all the writing and all the stuff on the side and on the on the trunk lid um, and you, a lot of times it's nice to debadge those things. It just gives it a cleaner look. And I feel like that's kind of what they were going for is more of a clean look. Of course, they want you to know that it's a, it's a Christopher Ward, right? So they're going to put that on there. They're, they're, it's, it's still a great brand, right? People know Christopher Ward is having quality stuff. Um, they've, they've built that name. So yeah, they should take advantage of that name. Um, I mean, honestly, if you look at the old logo, it was not attractive, uh, the previous iteration with the, you know, CH, uh, R period ward, <laughs> it just, I don't know. It's just, uh, that was not a good logo. The placement was, you know, uh, something, uh, expectable, I guess, <laughs> uh, it's a safe place to put it, but it by no means was a good logo. So when people just, you know, I, I feel like, uh, it's just crazy to hear people go on and on about that. So sorry I got so off on a tangent on that. I just, from doing these videos, I just see so many comments about the logo change. And, and even when I post on Instagram, somebody asks, oh, the logo, no, the logo, it's killing me, this logo. Like now I can't get the watch that I've always wanted. It's just crazy. So um, if hopefully some of you out there were on the fence about the logo change, Maybe looking at it from this point of view, hopefully will shed some light and maybe you'll get to have a nice watch in your life instead of uh, a watch you wish was made a different way. If it had one thing different, then you would have bought it. <laughs> so let me know what you guys think. I'm sure there's gonna be tons of comments down below. If you liked the video, hit like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks guys.